Welcome to the Addiction Connection Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Shaw. Today's topic is the book Crosstalking. Crosstalking is a book that I wrote, and I really love this book. <laughs> I guess that shouldn't be a surprise, right? You know, some of the things you write, or I write, sometimes I'm not exactly uh, thrilled with them. I mean, you can always look back and say, man, I wish I'd said this or added this or deleted this or said this differently. You know, uh, I've heard that with painters, that when they do a painting, uh, they they finish it and it's never really finished. They always look at it and think about more color they could have added or changes they could have made to enhance it or they get better at their craft and wish they had done it a little differently. Well, Crosstalking is one of the books that I that I wrote that I really really enjoy uh, reading, and I use it in a group format a lot of times with uh, small groups that want to do addiction, you know, have addiction transformation group or recovery group or something where, you know, five to 10 to 12, even as big as, I've, I've done it as big as a group of about 25 people, where we sit in uh, kind of in a circle or square and we read from this book and then discuss it because the book that I wrote, Crosstalking, is uh, the subtitle is A Daily Gospel for Transforming Addicts. So this is a devotional book with 45 different days of writing in it. And uh, for example, day one says addiction's biblical name, and it's part one of two of these. But it starts with scripture. The scripture in this one is says, they serve their idols, which became a snare to them. That's Psalm 106, 36. And then I write a little story uh, just about a young boy and, um, and then a point to ponder right after that. So I, you know, I try to uh, relate a story to this scripture and then a point to ponder, something, something to think about. And then I go on to write and teach in the the daily devotional. It's usually two pages, front and back, and mentions sometimes a little other scripture. Like in this one, it's John fourteen six, where Jesus says, "I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me." And then I end with a prayer. And you know, in this one, the the whole point is addiction really is a sin problem of the heart. Often it is idolatry. It, it just so enslaves someone uh, that they become uh, they become part of this uh, addiction lifestyle. So much so that that's how they look to the average person. Uh, so that's the layout of this particular book, cross talking, and. When I use it, we'll we'll read it. I'll have p- different people read a paragraph, and then we uh, talk about it. And sometimes just interrupt and talk about uh, different aspects of what's going on, and and develop our own our own questions out of that. And uh, I find those talks really fascinating. I mean, the teaching is pretty straightforward. People don't have a lot of misunderstandings with that. But then the the discussion that that uh, just launches from that is so good. It, it's fun to talk about these things and to think about the tensions in life because not things aren't always black and white. Um, and so there's sometimes there's tension between this idea and that idea. And of course, with scripture, we want to understand it as well as we can because scripture is God revealing His heart. God's special revelation to us, and it's a joy to be able to study Scripture and really get to understand the meaning of it because we get to know God's heart. Now, the play on words with the title Crosstalking, I don't know if any of you have ever been to a recovery or self-help meeting, but uh, at self-help meetings, they do not allow crosstalking. Well, what do we mean by that? Well, crosstalking at these meetings is defined usually as a dialogue between it, two individuals. So they're talking, the two people are talking to each other, but they're excluding the other people in the group. 
And a lot of times in cross-talking, someone is giving someone else advice and saying, you know, John, what you need to do is this and that and the other after what John had just shared his heart about uh, whatever topic he had shared his heart uh, on. And so that person is is talking to John, engaging him, but that is not allowed at self-help meetings. And so they're not allowed to, to do that, uh, to do cross-talking. Well, another little aspect of many self-help secular meetings, 12-step meetings, is that there's not, they're not allowing cross-talking, capital C, cross, the cross of Jesus Christ. That's also denied as a topic. And so I named this book Cross-Talking because we want to talk about not just the higher power, but the highest power, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. This type of cross-talking is encouraged in our meetings and in our times together and in this daily devotional, but it's not encouraged in, um, in many of the self-help 12-step meetings. I mean, you can talk about a higher power, but when you name the higher power Jesus or say that he's the highest power, then you will not be um, allowed to do that much longer. You, you're, not, you're asked to not, not, not be in those meetings. Well, cross-talking is certainly encouraged because it's the hope of the gospel for the heart of addiction, and that's, that's really what it's all about. That's what the Addiction Connection is all about. We want to help people to understand that Jesus Christ came and died for the addict. We don't want anyone to think that addiction is something outside of God's reach, outside of God's realm. We want people to understand that Jesus Christ died for the drug addicted and that he has the power not just to recover them or make them a little bit better than they used to be or even take them back to their original being, we know that Jesus Christ wants to transform them. Romans 12, 2 states this, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so that's the goal, transformation. I'd love to be a better Mark. There's no doubt about it. And in the Christian life, God doesn't just teach us, Mark, you can be a better Mark. He says, Mark, you can be like Christ. You can be transformed. You can be changed from a caterpillar into a butterfly. And what a joy to think about. God can transform me. I don't have to be conformed to the patterns of this world But God, by his Holy Spirit and his word, can renew my mind and transform me in a way that I begin to discern what the will of God is. I get to know God's heart, and I get to know what's good, what's acceptable, and what's perfect. What a blessing. What a a God that we serve who wants us to know his heart. He wants us to do things right. And, and he loves us and he redeems us in order that we may be new creations like Second Corinthians 5.17 says. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. I mean, I don't want to be that old me or, or a better version of the old me, an improved old me. I want to be a new creation. I want to be a brand new butterfly. I want to fly. I don't want to just crawl around. And a lot of people that I counsel who struggle with addiction, they think like caterpillars. They're recovered. They're doing better. They're not using. They're not drinking. Yes, they are doing better. They're recovered. They're in recovery, as they say. But they're still caterpillars. They're still walking around. Even though they have butterfly wings and they could fly, they're afraid to. They they don't really understand the promises that God has in his word in transformation. I mean, transformation is both an immediate occurrence at salvation, that we're new creations, new creatures in Christ Jesus, but it's an ongoing process of growing in Christ after salvation that we often call spiritual growth or sanctification. So that command in Scripture is to be transformed 
That applies to people with addiction problems. It's, it's not something that is beyond them because those who have addiction problems struggle with sin. And we know that because uh, the Bible tells us so. In places like Proverbs 23, Ephesians 5, and other places, it talks about drunkenness as a sin. Even Jesus talked about it in the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. And so my reason for writing this daily devotional called Cross Talking is that I want people to know that the Lord wants transformation. Yes, he is all about saving people, helping people to change their behavior, but he's really about changing the heart. Changing the heart at the, at the heart level, when that happens, then the behaviors change as well. And so words like addiction, alcoholism, those words were non-existent a few hundred years ago. People saw addiction as a moral problem, a sin issue. And then in the 1930s, really, it got popularized that this idea of alcoholism is a disease. And that was just a theory. Back then, they talked about it as the theory of uh, disease theory, uh, theory of disease. And so now... People commonly accept this as truth, and I put that in quotes, because it's not true. It's still just a theory, and yet people talk about it as though it's true. Well, things change very quickly in our culture, and I think the danger of calling this sin a disease is it points people away from the forgiveness of Christ for all sins, even those of drunkenness, even those of idolatry. So I want to point people toward Christ. I want to use his words. I can't call something a disease that God doesn't call disease, but that he holds the person morally accountable, morally responsible for. That's the danger in the disease language rather than using it as sin or the the sinful desires of someone's heart. We don't want to point them away from Christ. And, of course, I go into more detail in the book, The Heart of Addiction, a biblical perspective. I go into detail in that book. But the cross-talking book is just a bite-sized tool that can help you uh, as you counsel someone one-on-one. I typically will assign it in addition to the heart of addiction. So I have them reading the heart of addiction. I have them reading cross-talking every day. And then uh, we use the cross-talking book, like I said, in, in small groups where we discuss it, read it, and discuss it. Ultimately, we do all of that because we really want to reinforce, using the cross-talking book, reinforce the truths of God's Word. And, you know, recovery is a good word. I say that often that, you know, after surgery, one is placed in recovery for a time of physical healing and improvement. You know, if you have surgery, you're wheeled out of there and you're placed into one of two rooms, either the morgue which is not where you want to go, right, or into that that room, or you go into the recovery room. The recovery room is a good room to be in. That's where we want to go. Well, recovery is the same thing. You know, it's a good word. It's the room we want to be in in one sense. We want to be improving and growing. But really, God has a better word, and that word's transformation, Change in the likeness and image of Christ, being something totally different than what we were. And I know I look back on my life and I can see that with my testimony. I'm not the person I used to be. Now, that doesn't mean I'm perfect now. My kids, my wife, my family will tell you that, that I'm nowhere near perfect. Haven't been today. Haven't been in the last hour. Not even close to perfect. Yet I'm a new creation spiritually. I'm born again. I'm new. I'm not who I was. I have a new nature. I have new desires within me that help me to live in a way that pleases God. And I want to please God and I want to obey his word, not because his word is burdensome, but because it is bringing freedom in my life. It's helping me to live in a way that's new and different and satisfying, and it's the best way to live. Quite frankly, it is the best way to live. And so God is transforming me. Another place in Scripture is 2 Corinthians 3.18, 
which says, And we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed in the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So I want to be transformed into his image. I don't want to be Mark. I don't want to be recovered. You know, and recovered, the, the sense of that too is just putting a new cover on the old thing. Well, that, that's good. I mean, I've, we've done that with furniture. We put a new cover on it, and it's, we've gotten some use out of it, and it's been great. But boy, isn't it nice when you buy that brand new couch, when that thing is soft and comfortable and, and um, just brand new? Well, that's the promise that God gives us. He doesn't just throw an old throw rug on top of the old couch and you sit down and the springs hit you and it's not comfortable and you you just, you know, you know you need a new one, but you can't afford it. And, And believe me, we have done that. We still do that from time to time with our furniture. Well, that's the picture of recovery and and it's okay. I mean, you're, you're getting more use out of that old chair, out of that old couch, but God has something better. God offers transformation brand new creature. And so really the guts, the inside of that couch are removed. Uh, New guts, and I'm just calling it guts because I don't know the right word, but new uh, equipment is put into that couch. It is redone on the inside and on the outside, and it is now comfortable and uh, a very new furniture item. Well, that's what happens with us. God changes us from the inside out. It's not just throwing a a cover on top of us. He's changing our heart. And when that happens, you know, the outward behaviors change as well. God wants to change your heart. He wants to transform you. He wants to make you into the image of Christ. And that only works when the Holy Spirit is partnering with the Word of God to renew your mind to renew your desires to where you want new things. You want what Christ has to offer. So I hope that encourages you today on this podcast. We're talking about the book Cross Talking. It's available through Focus Publishing and Amazon and everywhere else they sell books or bo- biblical books, I should say. Um, it's available to you. It's short 45 day lessons, each one ending in a prayer, a short usually one sentence prayer, teaching a lesson, talking about scripture and helping us to know God, to really understand and know his heart and to know that he can transform us by his amazing grace and his amazing power. Thanks for listening today. Hope you'll join me next time on the Addiction Connection podcast.